Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to start with Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses, and then we're going to hear what the seventh trumpet brings when the seventh angel sounds his trumpet. So let's get started with the two witnesses. Be sure and listen to this closely now. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshipers, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for forty-two months, and I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for one thousand two hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, and they stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying, and have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, some from every people tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. Now we're going to hear about the seventh trumpet. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before, before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumbles, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. And that is where we're going to stop for today. That was chapter 11 of Revelation. And now we are going to read Psalm 139 for the director of music of David, a psalm. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me, just like he does every single one of us. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? 
Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord? and abhor those who are in rebellion against you. I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offense, offensive ways in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And that was Psalm 139. For the director of music of David, a psalm. Another one of David's beautiful psalms. That's an, another one I like really well. Okay, we're going to end today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 30, verses 15 and 16. The leech has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. There are three things that are never satisfied. <laughs> what? There are three things that are never satisfied, four that never say enough. The grave, the barren woman, land which is never satisfied with water, and fire which never says enough. So true. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading. I hope it touched your hearts. Let's get, I'm going to get our um, homework book out here. The question was, who in the Bible was turned into a pillar of salt and why? All right. Um, Abraham had a nephew named Lot, and Lot and his family were there uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah, one of the places, and you know God was going to destroy those with fire and brimstone. So the, uh, they sent angels to be able to get them out to safety, Lot and his family. And so when they were leaving, God started, you know, destroying the cities. And he told them, whatever they do, don't look back. Just to keep going forward and looking forward. Don't look back. And Lot's wife looked back and was instantly turned into a pillar of salt. So it was Lot's wife. She was turned into a pillar of salt. Salt, sorry. And then it was this Lot and his two daughters. All right, so good job, guys. I know Layla got it right. Thank you for playing along, Layla. I really enjoy that because <laughs> I'm used to nobody ever playing along with us. I really appreciate that. All right, so let me go to the next question. I don't even know what it is right now because it's on the next page here. You'll find this in the Old Testament. When King David was a child, who did he kill and why? Or how, how, I mean. What was the person's name that David killed as a child and how did he kill that person? 
That is your question for tomorrow, and you can find it in the Old Testament. All right. That is where we're going to stop that. And let me read the list of our prayer requests. Please keep the following people in prayer. Lonnie Doe's Jr. and family. Jimmy Myers. Abby Myers and Rhonda Karshner. Sherman Crabtree. Layla and her son. Michelle Watkins. Judy Thompson. Cindy and Jim Welsh. <coughs> Dora Carper. Garnet Boyer. Randy Post. Barb Post, April and Linda Thacker, Melody Stanley, and Norman Kirshner. Alright guys, that was everything for today. I hope it touched your hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Remember, only five days till Christmas. Hate to be the one to bring that up. Because <laughs> some people don't like to hear it's coming too fast. I know that. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys.